Hunters, welcome back to another Evasion Series video. Kashala is an old, old monster, but they have changed a few of his attacks in Rise. And honestly, for me, he's been one of the most fun fights in Rise. Pretty balanced, good number of variable combos, and doesn't overextend or do too much at once. If you're new to the game or just haven't hunted Kushala a lot, I hope this video helps you. And this is a great monster to practice your skills since he does challenge your timing, but he also gives you the space to learn. So grab a wire bug and let's jump into the breakdown. We're going to start off with the roars like most monsters have. Kushala has two types of roars. A regular roar, which is just like most monsters, he yells at the top of his lung and can stun you if you don't have proper earplugs. Weapons like Insect Glaive that have built-in earplugs are immune to this one. You can also counter his roar like most regular roars from other monsters. Now the initial roar of the hunt is a very quick one and you should be prepared for it. While other monsters take a moment to prepare themselves, Kushala goes straight to the roar to the point that if you want to counter this roar, you should pretty much be ready to instantly counter the second Kushala gets alerted. The second type of roar Kushala has is a shorter one and it's not very, very different looking than the first one. But how it ends is where the difference occurs where there's a wind aura around him that pulsates outward. The wind aura can stagger you and cause your character to do a cover up animation. If you get staggered, Kushala usually goes straight into another attack. So you gotta spam that movement and dodge buttons just so you can get out of the way. Next we have the claw swipe attack which is a pretty clear attack. Kushala tends to swipe from one side to the other side from time to time. He makes a large gesture which usually gives you enough time to dodge or avoid it. However, the issue is that his tails are very very short. Kushala will usually pull his head back to one side. His head stays pretty low so it's a very subtle movement and it's paired with his body leaning to that side. After this one motion he opens his mouth, jiggles his head a little bit and whichever side the head is on is the side he raises his claw and then swings towards you. He will also move his head in that direction as well as if trying to intimidate you a bit before hitting you. Now it's a very exaggerated arm movement so if you can notice early enough the head being pulled back and the body leaning you'll be able to dodge the attack. Now generally to dodge his attack you have to roll to the side the attack is coming from but depending how close you are to his body you can either roll away from him or roll under his arm so that's sort of a judgment call you have to make. This move is counterable although I will say it's not the best attack to counter. Kushala doesn't pause or reset himself after this attack and generally he goes into another attack immediately. I'd only counter this claw swipe attack if you know you're very close to knocking him and just need that extra damage. Moving on here, we're going to talk about some of his blast attacks and Kushala has quite a few of them. The most basic one is the air blast. The big cue for this is that Kushala will raise his head high and get on his hind legs for half a second. He'll suck in some air while he's up here and then he'll drop back down shooting his air blast as he touches the ground. The location and direction of the blast is locked the second Kushala raises his arm off the ground. So just moving to the sides, even walking is more than enough for you to dodge his attack. You can see right here, I can heal and walk and I still dodge the attack. He does have a small and big version of the attack and it really depends on the charge state of his aggression. But either way, the attack animation doesn't change. In addition, this and all other blasts are single attacks that travel forward. So you can counter all of them no matter how close you are. And once you do, the attack can't hit you anymore. Now something to note about this attack, very often, Kushala loves to reposition right before this attack. He'll sort of hop to your right or left, kind of like a 90 degree angle from where he started, and then prepare the blast. So this is a signal for you to keep in mind. If you see Kushala hopping 9 times out of 10, he's going to follow it up with an air blast. A final note, if Kushala has his black aura charged up, the air blast becomes a dark air blast and travels a little quicker. Animation and everything is exactly the same and how you dodge it is basically the same thing. You just need to be aware that you need to move a little quicker because you have a slightly narrower window to dodge. The final blast bomb is an ice blast bomb which is similar to the wind but generally it's more of a special attack so your character will give you a warning saying that something is coming. How this attack will start is that Kushal will usually hop backwards. It's one of the only attacks that he hops directly backwards so it's a cue for you. After the hop, he's going to raise his head, almost pointing to the sky while he sucks in air. His wings fold back backwards and as he does this, once they fold as far back as possible, that's the indication that he's charged up. 
The charging animation takes about one and a half seconds before Kushal falls back to the ground and just like the other ones, as his arms touch the ground, he shoots out the ball of ice. So again, dodging this attack is pretty much the same thing. You can just keep moving in one direction and roll when his four limbs land on the ground. You can also counter the attack if you wish. The last blast attack is actually a front brush blast. This is a gust of wind that Kushala blows across the front of his body. It's not a hard hitting attack, but it is designed to stagger you. So things to look out for the usual indicators that he'll pull his head high to the left or right side while sucking in a great amount of air. This one is very clear because it's one of the only attacks where his limbs don't leave the ground and his chest goes really really high. After about one second of sucking in air, he then blows the air across the front starting from the side that he pulled his head to, moving to the opposite side. To dodge his attack, if you are anywhere on the side his head is pulled back or even directly in the middle, your best option is to roll backwards, get away from him, or you counter the attack on the spot. If you are closer to the opposite arm of his head, you can actually move closer to that arm and get on the outside of that arm. This opposite arm is a safe zone since the attack only hits in front of his head, and since the attack starts on the opposite side, you actually have time to reach this spot. Now let's move on here. A lot of monsters in Rise have a straight charging attack. They essentially charge forward running in a straight line, so dodging them is usually pretty easy just rolling left or right. Kushala also does exhibit this attack, but he also has a variation in which he flies right by you instead of running. And the big concern is that this attack has a wind aura that if it's not tempered by poison, it will stun you for a moment, so simply being one dodge roll away is not ideal. You need to be at least one and a half dodge rolls away. So my advice here is that if you see him fly into the air, jump into the air at any point, just keep moving in one direction and roll when Kushala charges forward at you. The strat is pretty effective because not every time Kushala flies into the air, he's going to do this flying attack. Sometimes he might just jump up and then come back down and land on you. The next attack is the forward chomp attack, which is an extending bite attack that most monsters exhibit. Kushala prepares for this attack by pulling his head to one side, typically his left or your right. As he pulls his head back, he pivots his whole body to that side and you'll notice his arms leaving the ground for a second. This pivot is the key difference between this attack and all the others I talked about before. Once he launches, he bites towards the opposite side, so the chop attack does cross the middle area where you're standing. An alternative to this is that usually Kushal, when he's in rage, he will do a double forward chomp. Once starting from the right and going left, and then the opposite to finish. In this attack, he does move forward with his attack, so simply moving to the side, if you're close up, isn't the solution since his body does become a hitbox. Dodging this can be tricky, but the key is to really notice that pivot and head movement early. The second you see that, whichever side you're closer to, just get on that side of him. And the second he passes by you, you turn right around and move back towards the head. He's gonna end up some distance away from you, but if you can turn around quickly and get back to his head, this attack is actually a very good opportunity to damage the head afterwards. Next up, we have the Flying Stomp Attack, which is commonly seen only when he's enraged and has his black aura, Although on the rare occasion, he can do this earlier in a hunt if you get pinned or staggered. How this attack works is that Kushala will fly into the air and his body will get charged with some red lightning. If you notice these red sparks, that's your cue that the attack is coming. You have about a half a second from when the sparks appear to when he charges and slams down on your location. It does have a very narrow hitbox though, so it's pretty easy to iframe. As long as you hit the dodge button as Kushala is descending, you'll dodge the attack. So the main things to keep an eye out for is that red lightning sparks and just be ready to roll. If Kushala doesn't have his black aura, he will do this attack once. If he's enraged and does have that black aura, he'll do it two times in a row. Countering this attack is pretty effective. However, if Kushala does it twice in a row, it's a little more risky since the counter does leave your character fairly vulnerable after. So if you attempt to counter the first stomp, you better be sure that you can knock it or stagger Kushala. Since that's a little harder to judge, I recommend dodging the first one and always countering the second slam since you know for sure Kushala won't move after that. If you actually get hit by the first slam, you can actually stay on the ground until he lands the second one. You have that hit invincibility period and since the second attack is a very quick attack, you're actually safe to stay down on the ground and then get up immediately when he lands and attack him. Alright, let's jump into Kushala's bigger attacks. So starting with the laser attack, it's a slightly different laser attack than most other monsters. It's a two-part attack, 
which is kind of neat, but in reality, it's very, very easy to avoid. The first part is where he does a wind laser from the ground. Kashala begins by charging and blowing the ground below his head while raising his body a little bit and his arms just get off the ground. After about a second, Kashala then comes down again on all four and raises his head, bringing the wind laser up towards you. Now the tricky part about his attack is that unlike other monsters in Rise who lock their positions early, Kashala actually adjusts at the last second. So his laser position actually locks as his arms return to the ground. So if you dodge or roll or move too early, the laser is going to adjust as he comes down to hop and shoot it at you. So you must time your dodge roll according to when his front arms are just touching the ground. Too early or too late and you'll get hit by the laser attack. Now of course if you notice this attack well in advance and you essentially roll way farther out to the right or left, then you're probably clear of the attack range. Now if you do get hit by this laser attack, you're not in the clear yet. The attack as I mentioned is a two part attack and the laser sends you flying into the air. Once you reach the peak height, Kushala actually prepares to launch another attack at you by jumping into the air and then sends a wind blast bomb at you. Together, these two hits can cart you. So if you do get sent into the air, you have no choice but to wire bug dodge out of the air. There's simply no other option. If you have no wire bugs, you hope and pray to RNG that your health doesn't hit zero. Finally, we reach the tornado attacks. Now these are the hallmark attacks of Kishala and he loves to combo them with all the other attacks that we've seen so far. There are three main tornado styles that Kishala has, two of which have a normal and a stronger version. The first one is just a basic attack where he releases one tornado in front of him and it just travels forward. This is usually the attack that he does to usually make some space between you and him. He'll jump backwards and release the tornado to gain some space. Especially in enraged mode, Kishala loves to combine attacks, so even with this single tornado, he'll sometimes jump back, release the tornado, combo by flying to get behind you, and then he'll do a laser attack from right behind you. So you gotta always be aware of where he's going and keep moving when you're hunting Kishala. Now the stronger version of the single tornado attack is instead of just one, Kishala releases a triplet instantaneously. That's the only difference and it's very easy to navigate through the tornado since they have set directional paths one up the middle and one on each side. The second style is that he releases three individual tornadoes, one down the middle and then one on either side. Usually the one in the middle appears first and then one of the other two sides. Very very similar to the previous strong version, they have three linear paths and you just need to walk between them. Now just like the previous tornado attack, this one he also jumps back to make some space. The main difference is he'll hover in the air for a couple of seconds and suck up some air. He also has a very distinct roar that you can hear right here. That's your indicator that the triple tornado is coming instead of the single one. With this second style, after three tornadoes are launched, he will generally drop back to the ground so you can go for an attack. In the stronger version however, instead of three single tornadoes, Kushala drops triplets. So it's the same concept of three different directions of tornadoes, just it's three tornadoes instead of one in each direction. Again, it's not too hard to make your way between them, but the key difference with this attack is that he will do this special laser attack in your direction. Since there's nine tornadoes on the field, it actually obscures your vision, and he uses that opportunity to try and blindside you with the laser attack. So no matter what you do, do not immediately go after him after dodging the tornadoes. I recommend you keep moving to one side until you get visibility of him and then if, if you see the laser attack coming, just as you would dodge that attack, dodge and roll the first laser and then you're clear. After this laser he will have sort of a little cooldown reset phase so you're free to charge him and get some damage on the head. The final tornado style is when Kushala is already in the air from another attack. He'll fly right over your head, trying to stun you with the wind aura and then he'll do a quick 180 and then roar into the sky while releasing a series of tornadoes that travel both forward and outwards in the left and right directions. They travel outward for about a second and then collapse in on each other a few meters in front of Kushala. This attack is a little hard to notice, but he does have one cue where if you turn your camera fast enough, you'll see him almost come down to the ground, but then immediately raise himself up and open his wings. The tornadoes follow this animation almost immediately, but again it's hard to catch if you don't turn your camera fast enough. So it's better to just assume that this attack might be coming if he flies over your head. Now there's two ways that you can dodge this attack. 
The first option is since the tornadoes move outwards first before collapsing in on each other, if you're close enough you can run up straight the middle and get under Kushala and you're clear from the tornadoes. The second option is if you're a little too far or you don't notice the attack on time, just move farther away, otherwise you're gonna get hit by the tornadoes collapsing like so. Now generally speaking, Kushala does like to land after this attack, it uses a lot of energy so he always drops from the sky so getting past the tornadoes and getting under him is the ideal play. There are a few off cases where he doesn't immediately land but it's pretty infrequent that you probably don't need to worry about it. Countering this attack is on a weapon case by case basis, there's a high risk of being hit by another tornado so I wouldn't entirely recommend it unless your counter gives you some invincibility frames to avoid the other tornadoes or you're like Insect Glaive where you can get some controlled mobility. The final attack we're going to talk about in this video is Kushala's ultimate attack, the ultimate ice storm. So you'll probably see this like once in a hunt, maybe twice at most if you take a little too long. The camera will zoom out of Kushala and it'll summon a lot of ice particles flying around him. Your goal is to get as far as possible from this attack, but if you can't escape in time you're going to get sucked in. If you escape, Kushala just dissipates the attack and nothing's going to really happen, but if you are sucked in to the point that you can't run anymore, you have two options. Number one, you just wait until Kushala jumps into the air. At this point the barrier is released and you can run as far as you can and you can just keep running. Don't mind the big ice storm behind you, just keep running, you don't, don't look back. Once the ice storm dissipates and you'll see it just vanish, you can just wire bug back and then get some damage. The other option is to just wait until you see the tornado actually appear on the ground and then do a dive backwards and just let the tornado expand and pass over you. Once you're inside the tornado you are safe so you just need to let it pass over your head. Now this is a good option because if you stay inside the tornado afterwards he's gonna drop right back down and you can get some damage on Kushala. The issue is though is that this one requires a lot more timing. If you miss time or dive too early or too late you're still gonna get hit by the tornado and then you've only set yourself back. And with that we've covered all the basic attacks of Kushala. I hope this helps you hunters out on your quests. Please let me know in the comments if I've missed anything or you have any questions. Kushala is a great monster to hunt in my opinion and an even better monster to improve your skills on. Even bow with the dodge bolt, Kushala is an amazing hunt. So good luck to you guys and we'll see you guys in Sunbreak. Stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out. <laughs>